Have you noticed the one thing that hasn't gone anywhere this entire time is that Nespresso machine because I don't give a flip what goes in and out, but the thing that is staying, no matter what, is that Nespresso machine. Hi, welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina. And today we are in my kitchen and I'm so excited because we get to do one of my favorite things to do. It really does relax me. And things have been a little bit crazy lately, so we could all use a little relaxation. So if styling up your spaces and making them beautiful calms you as well, then stay tuned because we are gonna have some serious fun today and some serious relaxation. Um, if this is your first time visiting, we here at Hassel Valentina love to talk about renovating, decorating. We do real estate, so we buy and sell. We love to chat about all these different things on this channel. So if you have not hit subscribe, we hope that you will. Don't forget, give our video a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section which one of these upcoming styles is your favorite. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I've been going through a French country modern kick for quite some time. I mean, if we could have hopped on an airplane and gone to Paris, gone to the French countryside, we would have already done it. I made the best of it, created a little French country modern vibe here at home, but now we're ready for maybe something a little bit different. But before I move all this around, I wanna chat through this French country style because I think there's still gonna be a lot of you. This may end up being your favorite. Um, so before we move it all around, Let's chat through what we've done to create this style as it is. So for the French country vibe, I really wanted to have this sort of, I don't know, it's sort of whimsical, isn't it? It, it feels like it's been collected. It's a little bit messy, actually. I, I styled it to be messy. And, and to me, that's what a French country kitchen really feels like. There's a messiness about it. The things are haphazardly placed. They, they just happen to land there. And I'm, I'm creating that look, right? And that's sort of my weird side coming out is that I just, I like to make it look like it happened that way even if I made it look like that. <laughs> and everybody in the house knows that goes right back to that same spot that none of that happened by accident. <laughs> All those little elements kind of play together to create this sort of collected feel as if it's a Parisian girl that's been to the countryside lately and she's put it all together. And I think it is an absolutely gorgeous look. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like these other looks better. If not, I will be putting it right back to where it is. <laughs> but let's take it apart. Let's try, okay, let's try boho style. I know, you guys don't associate me with a boho style, but let's do like upscale boho. I work mostly in luxury real estate, so we are selling very high-end homes. Our clientele is typically looking for a high-end product, so we can't make it look too thrifty. Like, it really needs to feel elevated. And I'm really going to, I, I really hope I don't, <laughs> don't mess myself up here, making promises I can't keep. I guess I'll just delete it and edit it out, and I'll pick some other style. This really doesn't work. <laughs> That's probably way too much honesty for this video. But I'm gonna try to create something that feels a little bit more bohemian. I don't know if I can actually pull it off. Okay, so I got really stressed out there for a minute because I was like, hmm, I'm not sure I can actually pull off a high-end bohemian look. And then I really asked myself these questions. What does a bohemian really love? Bohemians are very free thinking in general. I actually would consider myself to be a bohemian. I have a very open mind. I'm very free thinking. I don't necessarily follow a traditional path. I mean, I moved to Africa. I mean, come on. But my style doesn't necessarily look like a traditional bohemian. So as I think through, what are bohemians, what are they really all about? And how do you create a very high-end look for that bohemian? Well, I think bohemians really love to travel, typically. This is big, big generalizations here, I know. But I think of travel, I think of someone who is open to free form, someone who's open to things that don't have an exact system necessarily. But again, we're trying to make it bohemian modern, so we may have a little bit of structure in there still. 
Um, as I think about Bohemians, I also think a lot of times they seem to be drawn towards really raw natural materials. So things like maybe concrete or stone or things that they would be able to collect as they traveled or visited the beach or nature and these kinds of things. I think wood is another element that Bohemians use a lot. And so I'm gonna try to include those elements into this space as I pull it together and we'll see what we end up with. Bohemians also like a lot of plants. Did I say that already? I can't remember. They like a lot of plants, right? That's what always Bohemians always have a lot of plants. What is that? They're like connected to the earth. That's what I feel like. Maybe that's it. That's how I show my bohemian side, is all my plants. <laughs> Found this in a flea market and I absolutely love this bowl because it's made of stone and it's kind of rustic. You can see how I'm balancing that stone with that concrete planter and I've got some thyme growing that I can add in there. I found these amazing, cool, textured mugs. They look handmade. They may actually be handmade. They're made in Portugal and they're kind of rustic and just kind of imperfect would be a good word for these. And I think they're so neat. I found these at Crate and Barrel, guys. How cool is that? So these are definitely, when I have like a bohemian day, this is the cup I drink out of. And then I have this amazing basket, which I bought in Morocco. So I had my sea sponge originally up at the top, but now that I'm building this thing, it doesn't feel right. So don't be afraid to take things back off and move them around and try a few things. There's no magic formula. It just is about how it feels to you. So use your intuition and don't be afraid to move things around. I have these super cool plates that I found at Target and they have kind of that same warmth and patina. I'm gonna pair these maybe with something a little bit modern for glassware because yeah, again, <laughs> my style isn't super bohemian, so I'm just kind of rooting around and seeing what I've got to make this kind of look good. Um, I think I'm doing pretty well so far though. What do you guys think? <laughs> Back from my boho days when we lived in Morocco, I've got this beautiful print, which is framed in a Target frame. These are my favorite frames. I wish the Target would keep making them. They make them in a different color now which actually would go really well with this room. So if you're boho, go to Target. They've got awesome frames. I'm gonna put this on top. It needs something big to kind of anchor that area. One of my favorite, absolute favorite purchases that I've ever made from Pottery Barn is this amazing vase. And I love that this can literally go with any style. It's just classic. It's just a classic piece. And I have filled it with one of my favorite things from our time in Morocco, and that is mint. And this literally was just growing in my garden. <laughs> See, it's still got the dirt on it, and I'm gonna put some water in here. And this actually will root and keep, sorry, I was like, root, 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 root. <laughs> if you don't have mint growing in your garden, just get some, because it grows like a weed, and it's so easy to keep alive. And even just a sprig of it like this, if you put it in water, it'll just sprout and you don't have to remember to water it. So I need that, I need that. Um, but yeah, it really does make me happy. I love this. Our final two items are this really cool marble piece that I found at West Elm, but I'll leave a link for you. I don't know if they still have these. I just think that marble like this is really cool because you can use it for just about any style. It's just a good basic piece that will always help you style up a really great space. And it's really heavy. And then one of my most prized possessions, you guys don't laugh at me. I mean, nobody's surprised, right? When I'm like, I love things that feel fierce and adventurous and everyone's like, yeah, no, you don't surprise anybody when you say that. <laughs> I've always promised you guys that I would be honest. So I am um, taking pictures of my bohemian area and I think that this is one of the best ways to remove yourself from whatever it is that you're styling because you can really see from an outside perspective what your space looks like and I have to admit this plant is too bohemian for me. I love this plant. It looks amazing in my bedroom but I don't want this much messiness on my counter. I am a bohemian at heart but when it comes to visually I need it to be a little bit cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it out with the vase that I have from one of the other rooms. I'm gonna switch it out with this and I'm gonna go cut some greenery from the garden and see if that does the trick. Okay, well, I think that I'm pretty happy with this. Considering the fact that I don't consider my style to be very bohemian, I think this just really shows that 
you're probably, you've probably got a few things on hand that you can use to create an absolutely beautiful modern bohemian look. I really love this. I would absolutely leave it like this. It feels so fresh, it feels so alive, it feels really inviting and warm. And my husband walked in and I said, what style do you think this is? And he said, California modern. I was like, does that count? That's kind of bohemian, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if it does, but either way, I think it's a really fun exercise in what you can do using with what you just literally what you have on hand and just really mixing those different elements and moving them around. So you can see how I kind of moved that brownish color around. We've got some greenery. It doesn't move in an exact Z. You don't want everything to feel like a formula. So you kind of have to have some formula, but then just totally break it for other items. And it gives it that feeling like it just happened that way. So that's really important. It's one of my favorite tips. So we're gonna take all this apart. <laughs> Wait, maybe I should just leave it like this. Okay, no, we're gonna do one last one. And I was thinking it would be really fun to do something really modern, minimalistic. I'm gonna really push you guys with this one. <laughs> I think maybe I'm gonna try like stone and concrete and like really raw porcelain and ceramics and see if I can come up with something that just feels really, really cool and modern and kind of fierce. Is that okay? Am I allowed to do that on here? Okay, let's do it. I think sometimes the hardest person in the world to be is ourselves. And I'm afraid that if I show you what I really like that you guys won't maybe like me. And um, I, I think it's silly because on this channel, that's all we ever talk about is be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Like you are so unique and you are so amazing. And the things that make you you are the things that make you unique and special and should be celebrated. But then when it comes to myself, I, I'm like, but I'm on camera and people are watching and what if they don't like me? And I know you guys are gonna be like, that's ridiculous. Maybe some of you are gonna be like, yeah, let's wait till we see what you're doing here and then we'll decide. <laughs> but I really like kind of a rock and roll edgy vibe. The hardest part of all of it is just really owning who you are and not following the trends, but truly creating a home that when you walk in, your heart just does a flip flop. It just leaps inside your chest and you're like, and that's me. The real lesson here is to just simply be yourself. Now, if you happen to love a little bit of rock and roll and a little bit of edginess, then you've come to the right place because today we are pumping iron. <laughs> I got this at Home Goods recently, $39.99, which I know for me is an investment piece. It probably is for some of you, but it's so freaking cool, isn't it? I mean, how awesome is that? It's so badass. If you notice the one thing that hasn't gone anywhere this entire time is that Nespresso machine because I don't give a foot what goes in and out, but the thing that is staying, no matter what, is that Nespresso machine. These are my, one of my most prized possessions. These are still hand painted in Denmark. They are truly a work of art and one of my favorite places on the planet to go. And then I've got this absolutely breathtaking marble cutting board, which I gotta be honest with you, I've never once cut on that. I probably never will. I know you're supposed to use these things, but it is a prized possession. It was a gift from some of my dearest friends in Denmark, and I love it. I love the zigzag pattern. I love the jolt of pattern and color, and. Oh, I think it's so cool. At Target. I don't think they have it anymore, but I'll look for something. I'll link everything below as best I can or alternatives. And this little plant, no joke, cut it out of my garden. And what I love about these is this has been in water now for about three weeks and it is still alive. Betty Crocker and she's pink. Till they come out with a matte black version of that, it is gonna be in my cabinet. <laughs> there's no way I'm looking at that. Pink gingham, no. No, I, I complain regularly. Why can't they make this thing in black? <laughs> so until that day, we're gonna have some cool looking books out here 
and I don't know where this is gonna go, but it's gonna be rock and roll and a little bit earthy and cool, and I can't wait to see where it goes because I feel like I'm just gonna be myself and see what happens. One of my favorite art pieces is just literally a tear sheet out of a magazine, and I know that that's not real art, but that is the bohemian me, and I think that it is perfectly fine. If you see something that you love that is not high-end or not designer, it doesn't matter. It, it's not about the price tag. It's about having an eye for what feels good. And for me, I love high fashion. I love the artistic side of it. I, I love couture. And for you, that might be something completely different, but don't, don't be afraid to own yourself and own your style and don't worry about what other people think. I'm losing my sun here fast, so I apologize. The color is suddenly very blue because the yellow sun is setting over there. Um, I hope that won't bother you. I apologize. This is real life, people. Um, this is going back up and my Astier de Villette little bowl that I love so much. These are gonna go back up here because these are my favorite things. So sometimes when you're putting a space together, you're gonna to realize that there's something that you really want that you don't have. So I've got this little space right here and what I really need is like a really cool, flat, long piece. It would just be perfect for here. <laughs> I am not joking you when I tell you I did not plan this. Okay, I had this down in my basement. Oh my gosh, I had this in my basement. Uh, somehow it survived the mass exodus of things leaving the house. And, and just to prove that it was, it's been here, I'm gonna show you the inside. It's filthy, like I'm gonna have to clean this thing up. I can't believe I had the exact thing that I needed down in my basement. It's literally the exact shape that I wanted for up there. Oh my gosh, this came from um, the Project 62 collection at Target. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can find something like this at Pike's or Home Depot or something, but it's getting kind of heavy because it's the real deal. It's actually made of concrete. So I'm gonna wash this thing up and put it up on the shelf and get some pictures real fast before we lose the rest of this sun. <laughs> if there is one thing that you take away from today's video, I hope that it is to be yourself and to really figure out who that is and to realize that what you need in your home right now may not be what you needed before and some things are going to need to change and that is okay and when things become different then you may change them again and the new seasons are coming and there's always going to be change and that is totally fine if you loved this as much as i did don't forget hit subscribe give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below telling us which one of these looks was your favorite and what you would do at home and let us know if you feel like your home really celebrates your style or maybe it's like, ah, oh, I'm ready for something new. Because I don't know about you, but I know that a lot of things are going super calm and tranquil right now. But personally, I need something that wakes me up, something that energizes me, because I am not going to take this laying down. I need something that just invigorates me and helps me fight for that next day, fight for the future, and let's just do this, right? So if that's what decor does for us, that's pretty amazing, and I really believe that. I think that your home really does dictate so much of the way that you feel. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for hanging with us through these three looks, and um, don't forget, visit us at Instagram, Facebook. We have a great group over there of people. We love to chat with you all, and we've always got houseofvalentina.com if you're interested in virtual services, maybe some help finding out who you are and what your style is. We love to be able to work with you. Go visit us at houseofvalentina.com. And that is it for today. We will see you in the next one. Bye. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Mm -mm -mm. So good. Mm.